Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problem in, problems in this book from day number 251 to 400, from 251 to 400. This book, second edition, happens to contain almost exactly the same problem in most cases, and appearing exactly on the same pages, page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. If you happen to be interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important. They are still a big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately, the newer books do not provide us with enough practice problem. For that reason, from day number 401, we begin solving quantitative comparison question out of this book here the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 291. Please turn to it. Page number 291, problem number 11. Problem number 11. Just give me one brief second. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. Problem number 291. Page number 291, problem number 11. It's a geometry question. It's a geometry question. When it appeared in the exam, about half the people, about half the people got it right. 52% of the people got it right. Here's what we are told. We are told that in triangle ABC, in triangle ABC, we are told that AB equals BC. And that's all we are told. We are told that in triangle ABC, AB equals BC. And we are being asked to compare the measure measure of angle B versus 60 degrees. Column A, column B. And that's all it is. That's all that is given. I want you to pause the video right now. I want you to solve the problem yourself and once you have the solution then compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Okay, I'll give you five seconds to do just that, to pause and unpause the video. Well, here we go then. So first, let's draw the triangle that you're talking about. Triangle ABC. Here's our triangle ABC. A. Let me redraw it. Triangle A, B, C. We are told that AB, AB equals BC. In other words, in other words, what we're dealing with here is an isosceles triangle. If it's an isosceles triangle, then angle A has to equal angle C. What we're being asked to compare is angle B versus 60. Well, let's, let's go through all the possible scenarios. The requirement here is that it has to be isosceles triangle. So let's draw an isosceles triangle. Perhaps, perhaps these, are, these are 40 and 40. 40 and 40 is 80, in which case B would be 100. So in that case, B would be 100 versus 60, versus 60, in this case the answer would be A. Or maybe instead of 40 and 40, instead of 40 and 40, maybe this is, uh, maybe this is, uh, uh, let's make up 70 and 70. 70 plus 70 is 140, in which case B would be 40 degrees, because they all have to add up to 140. 70 plus 70 is 140, plus 40 is 180, now B is 40. In this case, in this case, B would be 40 here. What was the B here? Oh, right here. We have to compare with the scissors. In this case here, angle B is 40. In this scenario, angle B is 40 versus 60. In this case, the answer would be B. Now, do you realize there is one more possibility, actually? It is also quite possible. Well, that's it. We're done. As far as the exam is concerned, we are done. We have two conflicting answers, depending on what these, these angles happen to be depending on what these angles happen to be. If these angles, if, if angles A and angle C, this is the bottom line, this is the punchline. This is the nub of the story. This is the nub of the story. 
If angle A and angle C happen to be something more than 60, then B would be less than 60. In which case, the answer would be, we're comparing something less than 60 versus 60, the answer would be B. On the other hand, if angle A and angle C happens to be something less than 60, in which case, B would be more than 60. We see right here, 100. In which case, the answer would be A. Since we're getting conflicting answer, the answer is D. The answer to this problem is D. But of course, there is one more possibility, one, one more scenario, which is that perhaps, perhaps we may have a situation like this. Maybe these are, this is 60 and this is 60. In which case, in which case, what we have actually, what we have actually is a scenario where all three sides are equal. The fact that all three sides are equal does not negate the fact that these two sides are equal. If they tell you that these two sides are equal, that does not rule out the possibility that maybe all three sides are equal. Maybe what we have on our hand is an equilateral triangle. And if that's the case, then in this case, the answer would be C. Because we're comparing 60 versus 60, answer in this case would be C. And the answer, therefore the answer is D. But this last part was not necessary as we said, because as long as we have the conflict, as long as we find the conflict, we're done, the answer is D. Let's go to number 12. Question number 12. In question number 12, we're given a number line that looks like this. Number 12. In the real exam, 64% of people had no problem, problem with it. Here's the number line. We are told that this is negative 1, and we are told that P appears somewhere here. This is 0, this is positive 1, and we are told that R appears somewhere here. That's about it. That's all they tell us. And what they want us to compare is negative P versus, versus R. Versus R negative P versus R. Sometimes, sometimes my letters are capital letters, sometimes they are small letters, don't worry about it, it really doesn't matter. Negative P versus R. I want you to pause the video and do the problem yourself, okay? I'll give you five seconds. Okay, here we go. Here's what's going on. Negative P. For P itself, P itself is a negative quantity. P, as we can see, is less than negative one. P is less than negative 1. Let's make it a number here. Let's pretend that P is negative 1 and a half. If P is negative 1 and a half, then we have a negative sign in front of the P, right here. Which means this negative and the fact that P itself is a negative quantity, this negative and this negative will become positive. This will be something more than 1. Because of the fact that, because of the fact that P is less than negative 1, because of the fact that P falls to the left of negative 1, the negative of that quantity will be something more than 1 will be something more than one. Here in this case will be one and a half, positive one and a half. But it will be something more than one, something more than a positive one. This is how we write more than. Something more than one means one is a positive sign. But here I'm putting this positive to emphasize that it is actually a positive quantity because negative times negative is positive. So negative times negative is positive and it's going to be something more than one, something more than one, this quantity. Negative P is going to be something more than positive one. What about R? R we can clearly see falls to the R we can clearly see falls to the left of positive one. That means R is less than one. R is less than one, but negative P is more than one. More than one compared to less than one, the answer is A. The answer is A. Let's do one more, the next one. Number 13. Number 13, number 13 pretends to the same picture as the, as the one that we just did, number 12. Number 12 and, 12 and 13 share the picture right there. And this one, 74% of the people had no trouble with this one. About three quarters of the people got it right. And here's what we're being told. Column A and column B. Column A we have P plus R and in column B we have R minus P. Again, I want you to pause the video immediately, pause the video immediately, solve the problem yourself, then we'll compare your work against the work that we took together, okay? I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause. Okay, here we go. First thing first, first thing we realize here is that 
we have an R here, we have an R here. As I said, don't worry about the fact that sometimes I use capital letters, sometimes I, sm I use small letter. There's a good reason for it, there's a technical reason for it, and the technical reason is that I am bloody sloppy. Do you understand? I'm sloppy. This is capital R. And that's the capital P. That's the capital P. So, so what's the first thing we notice? The first thing we notice is that we have an R here, we have an R here. Why don't we subtract R from both columns? If we subtract R from both columns, the R goes away. And now, essentially, what we are being asked to compare is P versus negative P, which makes life very easy because P, P we know, P we know is a negative quantity. As you can see, P is P is less than negative one. P falls P falls to the left of negative one. Here, the fact that it falls to the left of negative one is not. We don't need that much information. We just have to realize that P, whatever it is, is a negative quantity. So here we have a negative quantity and here we have a negative of a negative quantity. Negative of a negative quantity is going to be positive. So positive versus negative, of course the answer is going to be B. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.